What's up, everybody? It's JY. I'm here with my compadre, Michael Nicastro. Um, it's been better times in Steelerland, but hey, we still hold the faith and we are excited because it is Tuesday, the Chris Wormley and Friends show. Uh, 6'5", 289 pounds, Toledo's own, the Chris Wormley and Friends show. Let's break it down. Sammy, roll that thing. All right, I got to jump in real quick because I'll give people a, a behind the scenes look a little bit. We always talk about who's going to do the intro prior to this show. Of course, Jordan and I get together. We try and, you know, figure out who's going to talk about what. I'm never doing an intro again. Well, no, I, you like that? Yeah, because you sound like a PA announcer out here. I'm officially never doing an intro again. Hold me to it, Chris. Hold me to it, Anello right. and Sammy. After, that's the only thing I was thinking about uh, in the beginning there. I'll tell you what, man. Locker room speeches, all that good stuff. You need to uh, – it could be another hobby. Just motivational speaking. Yeah. So let's bring him on. Christopher Keith Wormley. <laughs> oh, he went with the middle name. That one. Hey, I did, name. Hey, I did my oh, research no. before this show, Worm. Man, I don't, I don't know where you got the 289 pounds because I haven't been that small since freshman yeah, year of college. Wikipedia. 10 years ago. Wikipedia. They didn't update it. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to go on and, and change it myself then because, dang, I'm, I'm pushing 310 right now. I'm, I'm nowhere wow. near 289. It's the only uh, guy who wants to be heavier. Only only yeah. NFL players are like, no, nah, you know what? That's that's messed up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I kind of wanted to start it lighthearted because obviously we're just going to jump right into things. We know you, you're a busy man. Um, you know, just talk about what went on in Buffalo. Obviously, you know, not many good things to come, but um, just talk about what what didn't go right there. Yeah, um, I think we got embarrassed losing by 35 points. Five touchdowns um, is something that um, doesn't doesn't happen often in Pittsburgh, and um, it it was um, it was a tough day for sure. Um, you know, you lose games here and there in the NFL, but when you lose by that magnitude um, in the way that we did, it was it was embarrassing and and quite frankly unacceptable. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're still keeping the faith over here, and I know it's you know tough not to see everyone chirping on Twitter, but I learned from you best post and ghost, and uh, my life got got a lot better because no you know doubt. I was. Uh, tw Twitter can be a crazy place, but um, I need to take that advice a little more often. But, I try to tell you. Yeah, I know. Worm Worm said it best, but uh, yeah. So obviously, <laughs> speaking of people chirping, Ron Clark on ESPN. Um, we have the clip here, Sammy. If you want to play it gave up this team wasn't playing anymore it wasn't important enough for them to go out and have pride in the way they approach the game and that's a problem when you know you don't have what it takes on paper you got to go out and do something else that's what winners do this team didn't play like winners and I know, I know, you know, that's his job to talk about this, but just like personally, does that mean anything to you or you're just kind of, you know, you're a professional and you're used to, you know, it, or is it something that, you know, I just, how do you really take that? How does the locker room take someone, you know, who is a former Steeler uh, Super Bowl champion that was there, but not currently in the locker room? Yeah, I think a guy like him who speaks, who's, who has some credibility, he's been in the locker room, he's been coached by Mike T. Um, and now he has a platform to be able to speak on things like this. Um, you know, it, some people can think of it that, that he holds more weight in his opinion. Um, but at the end of the day, I can, I can always speak for myself and I never once gave up on a game, quit on a game, uh, wanted the game to, you know, be over any quicker than it was. I, I, I was trying to fight and, and play whether the, the reflection or my production, um, of that game, uh, reflected the outcome. Obviously, like I said, we lost by five touchdowns, um, but at the end of the day, we're 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 never looking to to shy away from things, from hide from things, from uh, to uh, to to blink, to bat an eye, anything like that. We're we're trying to win games, and when a guy like that um, has an opinion, like I said, people people listen to it, and he does have some credibility. 
Um, but at the end of the day, there's never been one time in my life where I've, where I've gave up on a game or quit. Yeah. And I, I completely agree with that. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, for sure. In terms of never giving up and keeping the fight, it sounds like Arthur, Arthur Mallette, uh, obviously a guy who's been with you for two years now, defensive back, uh, challenged everybody in the locker room post game, or at least, uh, you know, had some inspiring and motivational words. We are fortunate enough to get to talk to a guy who's in that locker room. Obviously, none of us were there. So break it down. Were you there? What'd you hear? And uh, what's your takeaways? Yeah, I think Art's a, a very passionate guy. And um, like I said, after a game like that, you know, feelings or, or emotions are running high. And I think he he made a great point of us to to love the game of football. You have to love this game, whether you're one and four, five and oh, 17 and oh, whatever the circumstances, you have to love this game of football to continue week in, week out, especially when times are low, especially when we're you know, essentially in the doghouse when it comes to in, when it comes to this NFL season so far to continue to put in the work to see uh, the optimism that there still is in this long season that we have and continue to go out there and fight. Yeah, no doubt about it. Is it something that caught your attention as well? Some laughing, some smiles. Obviously, I, we weren't able to see anything on, on television, but is it something that you kind of uh, were bothered by? Uh, I actually honestly didn't see any of that. Um, but you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and call art a liar. I'm sure he, he saw what he saw and, and he had, you know, he spoke up on it. And I think that's what, um, sometimes you need a, a little kick in the butt to get going, but at the same time, we're not going to, at least I'm not going to take the approach of, of this being a funeral, um, uh, being super sad and somber. Um, at the end of the day, I'm a human being and I can still, um, you know, have an opinion, be able to crack a smile, even when things are the way they are. Um, it, it doesn't allow me to, to feel a certain way when it comes to, um, you know, art's opinions or whoever's opinions are art feels a certain way and he can handle his business the way he wants to. And, uh, I think as a team, we have to continue to stick together. And I think that was his biggest point was just coming together, sticking together, staying together as a team. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that art stood up, spoke out and, you know, at least got his opinions and feelings out there because, if he, you know, held it in, we would never have, you know, know how he's feeling. And sometimes that that opinion of one guy can can spark a, a good, healthy conversation and and put a team in a better position. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier. But the good thing about this league and professional sports in general is there's always a chance to turn the page until the uh, the fat lady sings, if you will, or until you're eliminated from the playoffs. You guys aren't even close to that, of course. You're you're five games in at this point, but you have some fun coming to town. Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're back at Acreshire Stadium. This has to be extremely exciting, uh, of course, to try and get back on the right track against the GOAT, arguably. Chris, first of all, have you ever played Brady? I'm curious. Yeah, I played Brady once in 2019 when he was still on the Patriots. Uh, I think it was his last season there. And uh, when I was with the Ravens, and, and we beat him. And it was it was cool nice. to uh, be able to beat essentially the, the greatest football player to ever live, you know. He's won all the Super Bowls, has all the accolades and MVPs and all that cool stuff. So when you are able to beat somebody like that, it's it was pretty cool to me. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a new team with him, and this will be a, a, my first time playing with him on the Steelers. Um, but we're, we're looking to get win number two this year, and, and the Buccaneers are coming into town, and we're looking to get a win. Yeah, I'm going to make that the headline of this episode. Chris Warmly undefeated against Tom Brady. And we got one and oh, baby. One and, and, oh, it, and it's a Michigan man. That's it. Yeah, that's wow. cool too. He uh he was there a few years before I was, but um <laughs> yeah, he was, he's a <laughs> how weird is it to be like you were learning about football, like I'm pretty probably like six years old, something like that. When yeah. or maybe like seven or eight, when Brady started in the NFL with the Patriots, you're like, you know, probably throwing a football, catching one in the backyard for the first time. It's, it's unbelievable. So we'll speak to that longevity first and foremost. Are you going to get to 45 in this league? Oh, not in this league. No way. Absolutely <laughs> not. No. <laughs> I've got uh, I've got more frozen musicals and uh, and things like that to do with the kids. But uh, no, that's that's a testament to his his preparation, his uh, his willpower to stay in this league. Obviously, he's a quarterback, so that position uh, gets a little more love when it comes to to uh, how they're treated and, and the hits that they take. Um, but anytime you can spend 10 years, 15, 20. Now he's going on what year 23 or something like that. Um, that's a, that's a testament to his, 
um, daily discipline regiment of being, uh, you know, all in on on this on this game that we all love to play. And um, it's really cool to see somebody like that continue to have success. Um, but like I said, we're looking to get a win against him, and and he's just another quarterback in our way. Let's talk about the game plan a little bit. <clears throat> but I don't want to be too obvious. Every single game you play, you're trying to rush the passer and trying to you know force pressure, get the ball out of his hands quickly. But it really seems to be the recipe to beat Tom Brady, Chris. Yeah, and it's it's no uh, it's no secret that we've struggled a little bit since TJ's been out. Um, Alex is, I think, maybe still leading the league in sacks, but the other guys on the defensive line and the defense have to step up, and that includes me. Um, I know I know Cam's looking to to continue to get sacks. That's that's one of his uh, his his things that he that he loves to do. That's what us defensive linemen love to do. Um, and I know that in order to to have success against a team that Brady's on, you have to get to the quarterback. He loves to get the ball off extremely fast. He loves uh, to check down when the things that when the receivers deep aren't um, aren't open. So we have to be really um, not only on the defensive line getting the pass rush, but we have to be uh, squared away on our coverages and and being being and making sure that um, those check downs and those long balls aren't um, aren't there for him, so we can we can get there. I'm going to ask you to put your analyst hat on. You like doing this from time to time. Obviously, I think you have a big career in this after football at the age of 46, whenever you do hang it up. What's the biggest difference maybe between the Brady of old, Patriots Brady, maybe team structure, versus now, uh, maybe with uh, some added weapons around him in Tampa Bay? Yeah, I think um, when you look at what they did for 20 years in in – in New England, it was Brady and Belichick, right? And then everyone else kind of followed suit. Um, I think now Brady being a little older, still, you know, I think he was ranked the number one player in the in the league this year by by NFL players. Um, but he has some really, really uh, dynamic weapons that um, he's able to get the ball to. And I think their defense, not not saying the Patriots didn't have crazy defenses or or Rob Gronkowski, Gronkowski and and Edelman and and Wes Walker and those and Randy Moss back in the day. Um, but I think Brady is allowing other people to help him win the game um, and not putting, I think, that burden on himself to, to go out and, 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 you know, orchestrate victories just on his own. Do you vote in that NFL Top 100? No, they never asked me. I don't, who I don't votes? know if I have to. you got to pull that lock. Like, I, think, I think Cam, I think Cam, I think okay. Cam votes. And, uh, well, at least they never asked me to be on TV. We get, like, a list of players and stuff like that. But Really? To, to vote 100 times, it's like, I don't even know if I can name 100 players. That's, that's what I'm wondering when we see these. Like, who's who's voting for the 100th, yeah. 99th player? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it's a lot of time dedicated to that. Isn't it uh, like baseball, rock. though? Baseball, like, you have to, like, get, like, I know you get something. A ballot? Old, yeah. I don't, that's not how it's set up. Check 100 bubbles. Yeah, on we get a ball. ballot and we can do it, but, like, the, the top 20 are pretty easy, but, like, Right. Yeah, hundred. You'll I'm be gonna, sitting I'm gonna there. Throw, I'm gonna throw my name in there. At, you know, seventy-eight. Yeah, for sure. Ninety-five. Like, we'll forty-eight. I'll do fire forty-eight. What Next was your time around, make sure. Forty-five. Forty-three. Forty-three. Yeah. Or, uh, Troy. How the heck can I forget that? I was just. I was testing you. I, was I seen you. someone speaking of that. I think I sent you that tweet. It was on the Rich Eisen show, and someone said, "Who is your favorite forty-three on Michigan?" And I, I think I said, I don't, I don't know if I sent it to you, Warren, but someone said forty. That's why I knew that. And then okay, you told us yeah, about, yeah. you know, Troy Pulamalo. See, I, I do. Wikipedia needs updated, but I do my research. Are you saying Wikipedia with like Yeah, you're throwing an L in there. Yeah. Wiki. Is that how it says? In, well, I don't Wikipedia. know what it is. Wikipedia. Wicca. Wikipedia. Like, Wikipedia. Like Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh accent or something you're throwing Man. in. Man. Creek, Crick, same thing. I had a guy at uh, Home Depot today. I was looking for a toilet seat, and I was like, "Hey, man, where can I get a toilet seat?" He's like, "You got to go down the aisle, you take a right, and you'll run next to the dishwashers." I'm like, uh, "I am in Pittsburgh. I forgot." <laughs> you should, you should be, you should be well versed in it now, especially this I is am, our second I am. season. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fully immersed in. Tr- my, I get my daughter to say downtown sometimes when we're going to the city, so. Maybe your first year you would have been like, "Is what language is he speaking? Like, yeah, what what no is this different gibberish in some sense?" <laughs> you, you, you knew exactly what he was saying. You're like, I "Oh, knew. I'll yeah. five. Cool. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Jay. What? All right, so we're gonna play our favorite game and Worm's favorite game, Word Asso- Worm Association. Go ahead, Sammy. Roll that. <laughs> All 
Brought to you by Wikipedia. Yep. There you go. Down at the creek. Yeah. Wikipedia down at the creek. All right. Uh, we'll start with this one because I'm going to need some uh, some help with this parenting. Oh, man. Uh, I got about great... two weeks until I'm a dad. Yeah, man. It's the greatest thing you ever do. That's what I hear. I'm excited. That's that's what you that's what your warmest. That's the answer. Greatest the thing answer. you ever that's do. It. Yeah, that's all you need okay. to say. All right, so we'll go to, to something not as fun. Penn State. Sorry, Muth. Uh, go blue, man. I mean, it's that's. I'm excited for that game. Um, I got a little wager with with Muth on that, and and one of my old trainers that was with us last year with the Steelers. He went to Penn State. We got a we got a bottle of whiskey on that on that game as well. So um, I'm looking to come up a a, a couple hundred bucks and, and, a, and a good bottle of whiskey by Saturday night. So um, I'm excited for that matchup. It's gonna be fun. It's just a couple hundred. Come on, Burr. No, it's it's. I'm not looking to like take you know Moose like whole game check. You know, <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd much rather take his money and have him wear a Michigan shirt and take a picture yeah. of it and, and that's have the best that for for, for a whole week. No doubt. All right, uh, pizza toppings. You have pepperoni, sausage, anchovies. People want to know. <laughs> yeah, if I were uh, if I had to, well. I I used to make pizzas in high school. That was I seen school you job. making I seen you making a pizza last week. You, you did yeah. a radio show, so I, I I didn't know. Was that like the worm special? What was that? What was on that? Uh, I put I put pepperoni, bacon, and onions on that one. But if wow. I had to choose, I would oh. go. I, mean, I guess I had options, but I usually do pepperoni, uh, jalapeno, and sausage. Wow. Uh, see, I, I I wish I liked jalapenos. I don't I'm gonna, I don't like hot stuff. I'm no wonder like, you No wonder you needed a toilet seat. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> that that was I needed a toilet seat because I broke the toilet seat, not because the jalapenos broke the toilet seat. Fair All enough. Right. All right, one more. Pepsi or Coke? Uh I don't drink pop, but if I did I drink knew that pop, was coming. I would do uh Coke for sure. I was in I was in Mexico this this past summer and I had a Mexican Coke and it was it was delicious. It was so good. Oh uh, yeah. They make like the the Coca Colas with real like sugar cane sugar, like those yep. are the best ones. You go down to the strip district and you can get them at the candy shop. They're amazing. It's so uh, good, yeah. All right, well, do you have anything else for Warren, Mike? No, I uh, I would just say find him on Wikipedia, okay. uh, and and we'll, I will change his weight. There and, we go. Yeah, what, they got to update it. What are you three ten now? I said two eighty nine. They def six yeah, five though. You didn't grow or shrink, I, any, no. did you? I just gained a lot of muscle. We got a six pack now. <laughs> two percent body fat yeah there we go pizza sausage um, and i do have sausage, one thing that i want to say um just on sunday when you're rushing from the nose tackle position please just do me a favor and sack tom brady so i can tell my friends that my friends sack tom brady can you there just do go. that for me and just look up at the look up at the tv screen and say this is for you jay don't even i don't know I'm, it for me i'm here I, jay well, i'm here to service you and your storytelling to your boys that, that's what <laughs> i'm here you. for <laughs> Thank you. If that's all, I, I can die happy. That's all I know. No doubt. And also, if say that for if you do play until you're 46, that's going to run into your uh, presidential campaign, Big Worm 2024. You so think I can remember, do both at the same time or? Yeah, I think you have to be no. you have to wait until you're 35 to be the president, but they might make an exception uh, for you. Oh, so you got to my, my campaign manager, Jay Wise, has got to. Yeah, make, well, gotta, we'll start gotta, off gotta, mayor Toledo <laughs> and then go from there. Oh, man, now, Mayor, Mayor Wade in Toledo is doing a great job, so I'm, uh, I'm going to leave it to him. All right, man. Toledo Zone, thank you, Chris. Good luck Sunday. Disney on ice. Disney, Disney on, ice. on ice. Enjoy. And uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully with a victory and a worm sacking Tom Brady. Yes, hell see me. Thanks, boys. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube. Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.